McIntosh began in 1949 in Silver Springs, Maryland, moved to Binghamton, New York in 1951 into a lease facility. In 1956, this facility was built, which is the Two Chambers Street facility, which is where we do all the manufacturing and engineering. In manufacturing, we do all the sheet metal stamping and bending and forming. From there, we move into the painting process where the sheet metal is painted. After the painting, it's silk screened. We also do all of the winding of the output transformers, put all the glass panels with a high pressure water jet machine. Then we do the silk screening process, which is the UV cured ink. Then the last subassembly process is what we call printed circuit board insertion. So we use both surface mount technology plus through hole technology. And then we move into final assembly where the units are put together to final test, to pre-pack, then into the box and into the warehouse. Engineering is comprised of 10,000 square foot facility. It houses 22 people. There are hardware design engineers, software design engineers, mechanical design engineers, and acoustic engineers. We have uh, two rooms that we use for development. One is the anechoic chamber, obviously being a, a known room with specific sound characteristics. Then we have just the opposite, which is a reverb room that we use for development as well for the loudspeakers. It is a boutique operation where we're building very high-end products. A lot of people ask me what makes Macintosh look so unique amongst its other brands and heritage-wise how we've been able to hang on to it. The meter is probably the biggest thing that appeals to the Macintosh look. Blue was chosen as the color. If you read anything about psychoacoustics, red means anger usually, so blue is, was picked no different than looking at a blue sky and that was the hue that was went after. In the case of the front panel, it's Macintosh's signature look. And the glass panels we use because Macintosh has a tendency to last for many, many years. We've got products coming in for service for the first time that have been in the field for like 40 years. The glass panel is an integral part of that because it keeps its look and luster. Cutting the glass panel and doing it with accuracy is not an easy task to do. We manufacture the printed circuit boards in-house because we want to do 100% subtest on every board before it goes into the product. The units are 100% tested after final assembly, but also 100% tested before assembly to ensure that every specification that's inside the unit is going to meet our expectations before the unit's put together. One of the secret sauces that we use inside the products, especially the amplifiers, is the output transformer. We wind those in-house, it's a patented technology and we want to control that. We don't let that outside because we don't want anybody understanding what Macintosh's secret sauce is as far as the amplifier side of it. The Macintosh Famous Output Autoformer. Uh, this was developed in 1968 and back in the 1960s, the output transistors weren't of the quality we had today. So what we wanted to do was develop this technology so the output autoformer would sit between the amplifier and the loudspeaker. It's built into the amplifier, and what it allows is a series of taps, two ohms, four ohms, eight ohms, that you would connect your loudspeaker to. So instead of just two terminals, a positive and a negative, you would have a negative and then a two, four, eight ohm. Obviously, you would match those to the speaker you're using. If you were using an electrostatic speaker, it might be two ohms. If you were using a, a big ported box speaker, it might be eight ohms. It's important so the amplifier operates efficiently regardless of which loudspeaker you buy. We take our expertise from winding transformers and we continue to wind them. We put them in an aluminum can after we wind the transformers. We seal that with tar and that way it'll last a lifetime of the amplifier. It's completely hermetically sealed. We've continued to use it through all these years because the advantages are many. The transistors have improved, but we still want that ability to deliver full power into any loudspeaker. Obviously, this is not an inexpensive item to add to an amplifier. It's the character of a Macintosh amplifier that it has the output autoformer on it. It defines our sound and function. When people buy Macintosh, whether it's for their first purchase or they're a repeat customer, they want product that's going to last a very long time. We have a saying here at the factory. The output autoformer allows you to get all the power you paid for, regardless of what speaker you use, because amplifiers are for life. 